Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Anno 1800, shall we? Well, our good buddy, the black sheep of the family, wants us to have in storage four work clothes for him, and we do have that, so let's go ahead and give him four work clothes. Tell me you've managed something. So to give this guy his demands, just click on his ship and then click the check mark when you have the goods in storage. Now remember, I dragged clothing up here to the top center of the heads up display to keep track of different well, items and we have this, so I just say yes, we've got it. Have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Four bags full. Wow, what a funny guy. Um, okay, so we made it and now uh, we've done that portion. The, the city is actually running just fine uh, by itself. Everyone's happy. We have some extra laborers. And remember what I said about Anno. It's all about balance. We're just going to make sure that we are keeping with balance. Now, that being said, notice how we're actually full on timber. And we can't even make any more. So what we could do if we wanted to would be to sell extra timber that we have uh, so that we can continue producing. Because if I go, for example, over here to the sawmill, they are producing, but they're eventually going to have no place to take it. So one, we have some choices. We could produce some, and you can see right here, um, they're looking for a place to put it, and this cart has gone to sleep. That's what the ZZZ icon means because they're not doing anything. They can't take it anywhere. This is full of wood. When this green bar fills up, you can't go anymore. So what do you want to do? I'm going to slow it down just a little bit so I can talk to you. And what we definitely want to do in this spot is think about ways to use our extra wood. Uh, and one of the best ways is by, well, just buying more houses for people to move into. However, if we do that, we put a strain on our fish and our clothing and even our schnapps. So the question is, can we support that? And let's look at the fishery. It's producing here. But what I want to do is just click on my trading post and see um, if I mouse over fish. You see how it says trend increasing plus two? That means it's slowly filling up. So we're actually making re reasonable progress on fish and can probably build a little bit more. So Happy I'm going to just click on the farmer residence and I'm going to build one here. I'm going to build one uh, up here it, so it touches the road right next to the market and I can build one here. Now this is taking just a little bit of lumber to drop in. I'll build one here and one here. I'm not going to build too many, but that's a good start. And then we'll just let this go and we'll see, um, you know, they need fish, but they'll be able to get fish in a moment once it's delivered to them. So sometimes you just have to wait for uh, them to get all the stuff that they're looking for. We certainly, though, don't really have um, that many clothing. Let me look and click on our warehouse. You can click on your warehouse or on your trading post to kind of see your uh, industry, like how many of your goods are coming in. And right here, we're still increasing. And on clothing, it's stable. So when something is stable, and I know I want to expand by growing more population, um, I'm going to need to build more places to produce clothing. So currently, uh, the livestock area uh, oh, can we build more of these? Two out of five. Maybe I didn't build enough. No, no, no. Three. Okay, there we go. Uh, we have three out of three. And they're producing at 100% rate, and they're making at 96% rate. So these are working about as well as they can. So I'm going to then um, make another one of these. Now, I can pipette this by right-clicking. And let's talk about the right-click menu. We haven't really discussed this yet. The right-click is super powerful in this game. And you can customize this to whatever you like as well. Um, but right now, I can right-click to just 
go ahead and use the pipette or the copy tool, click copy, and then you can click on this building and um, make it somewhere else. And so you can click copy this guy, and then I want to drop it in right here. Now, when you copy something like the sheep farm, it does not copy the pens. You you still have to build more. All right. Now, I have a sheep farm, and I have laborers that can go here. Remember, when you're building stuff too, to keep track of your balance, you need to look at your workforce. I still have 53 extra workers, so this is great. And I'm going to build another one of these. So I'm just going to right click and select copy hit this building up and we want to put this right here so that um the wagon will go directly from here to here before it gets to the warehouse so that it saves time now just a, a quick note um you know, in some games like SimCity or whatever, like people might complain about living next to the Woolen Smocks factory, but not in this game, at least for people of this tier of population. They do not mind. It is no problem. Now let's click on this. You see it's just going right next door. It's actually going here. And then this one is going here because the front door is closer on this one than this one. So you see how they don't... It doesn't matter when I build it. It can connect even after the fact. So now it's like unloading this and this is unloading this and it's updating. All right. So now we've got more clothes coming in. How's our schnapps doing? Let's look at that. And we can go to the pub and um, it's working. But what about uh, the potato farm? Is it 100%? And this is at 100%. And then let me click on this good right here. And it is, uh, here, let me actually go over here and look at this, increasing plus one. So it's pretty good, but you can see that that's not enough. I want more. I like to actually have everything about at half or more. So we need more potatoes. And another thing too, um, the game will usually tell you this, but oftentimes... On these first industries, it doesn't matter as much, but oftentimes there's a ratio of like how many sheep farms you need to framework knitters. Like sometimes this can support two versus one. So you might, you know, not need as many, or I might need two potato farms for one schnapps distillery. And the way you can see that is um, you can honestly just look at Okay, well, what's going on here with the rate at which this is receiving the goods? If they're, if you have a one-to-one -one and it's operating um, at 100%, you're probably okay. But you always want to pay attention to, you know, what's going on here. Um, do I need more and would I benefit from more? So what I like to look at with all of these things is, again, come back here. Do I have potatoes stored up? I don't have any wool or any potatoes stored up because these things are making them as fast as they come out but take a look at this after producing all of this I'm only at plus 17 on my labor so I'm kind of running down on free laborers and I would need to build more farmers to get this going but if I click on these farmers for example um, there's still people are still moving in all of their needs are met. So once everything is balanced, all of everyone's needs are met, um, I feel good, and I'm going to go ahead and take care of the quest. We're just going to leave the city for now, and let's jump to this by left-clicking on the target arrow. And this, is, this tricked me when I first played it, but you need to find your cousin leading a mob in the vicinity of Edward's Great Exhibition, so construction site. So here it is, but you have to actually look around for an angry mob and here they are right here it's like this group of people and you can click on them and then 
you need to find your buddy. Um, find five mobs that are rioting. So this is actually not a rioting mob. That's just a group of people. So, oh, here they are. They're all angry. So we got one. And then when you click them, they kind of go away. Um, just as you locate where people are getting upset. And you, oh, here we go. Here's another one. So you just kind of look around. You can hear them. And you see they have these big signs that say strike. And you just click on them. And th this is the journey. He says, um, the people of Bright Sands are not happy with your uncle's oppressive conditions and are willing to serve a fairer employer, which is us. Find the rioters and convince them to join your company. So we're clicking on them and then we're making them disappear by coming to our island. And the distant camera view can provide a better view and they've been observed around the world's fair. So we need to find some more of these. This is our cousin right here. We'd rather die than stay. Our flags still wave for Samuel. Let Edvard oppress us no more. So you can hear this guy's opinion, and it's strong. He don't like up being oppressed by Edward, and who would? So I'm going to roll around, look for some more angry mobs. Here's another one. Okay. And here's another one way down here. Got him. Just click on him, and eventually it'll register. They will disappear. Away from Edvard, we're on board. Only we've no ship to get on board of. Okay, so we need to build a ship. If you pick me, you may have my boat. It's my poor aunt's legacy. Her second husband was a decent sailor. So the newspaper editor wants to leave Edward and will move in with us. He's actually, um, <laughs> I don't like him, not because he's a bad guy, but because the newspaper is annoying, as you'll see, but. Um, it's one of the most annoying things in the game, actually. Uh, but anyway, uh, you need to find, click, go over here, and then it says select the editor and his crew at the harbor, which is this arrow pointing here, and you just kind of select them. And now you need to select the ship, and you can select the target to pinpoint it. It's right here. And we select this. Good. I, I shiver at the thought of staying here another second. Okay, and then we just say, all right, yep, and boom. your cleft of the family no shame that it now resorts to abducting my workers the queen's ambassador himself shall hear of this abduction is a severe accusation and if i may uh, excuse me a false one we left Edvard quite willingly. All right. Pencil polishing, Popinjay. I should have been rid of you long ago. I see nothing criminal. A bit of interfamilial bickering is only natural, <laughs> and hardly a matter for the crown. And as for you, I have quite forgotten my manners. Sir Archibald Blake, ambassador and confidant to the Queen. Despite the circumstances, Her Majesty and I were pleased to hear of your return. Your father's death was a tragedy. We regret he never had the chance of a fair trial. The real tragedy here is the vast funeral bill that goes unpaid while this brat is living the life of O'Reilly. Yes, sadly, the life of O'Reilly has indeed alerted me to some uh, floating liabilities. I fear you have no choice but to settle them if I am to grant you your crown shipping license. We want that. Edvard registered the debt officially. Yeah, terrible. Don't worry. That old tyrant can't hold us back anymore. We got the cousin. Indeed. Once my letterpress is up and running, the truth will come back to haunt Edvard. Uh, for your hospitality, please use my ship howsoever you may wish. Now that sounds like good news. All right. It may warm Her Majesty's heart to see a new enterprise taking shape. 
So what's awesome is that, like, this guy who is in charge of the Maybe debt... Maybe Edvard will try to prevent us owning a shipyard. But for now, let's at least house those workers. Um, is actually pretty reasonable, the guy serving the queen. So we he's going to give us a good amount of time to pay it back. So here's what we need to do. Uh, the, so she's saying time for a raise. And having saved the unhappy workers from Uncle Edward, Edward's regime... Your town must grow to accommodate them. With suitable housing, more workers will soon flood into your settlement, giving you the manpower to build your first shipyard. Uh, and that's how, at least in my opinion, you can make a great amount of money in this game is by making ships and selling them uh, to this dude, actually. He'll buy as many as you can make. Uh, and this is Sir Archibald Blake. Um, so... What do they mean, workers? Well, workers are what happens when you take... Uh, I'll click on this house right here, that these farmers. And if you see this button in the middle where it says upgrade residence, it costs four wood, and luckily we have all these planks. It will upgrade them to be workers instead. So what does that look like? I'm going to do it right now. I'm just going to click this. You reached a new milestone. And we get into a new age because we have a new type of laborer who is the worker so more sophisticated than the farmer they can do more types of labor in fact they do different labor workers can handle stubborn debris on ditch water if it's to be the center of our new enterprise it needs to be immaculate um, each production building requires a specific Honest type work. of workforce we should always house enough of each to keep our industries running. So, okay. Yep, yep, yep. This guy keeps talking. Okay, so what's going on is... Oh, good God. Correct. So, to get a shipyard, we need 150 workers. We can now clear the abandoned smeltery, um, which, if we zoom out... Uh, we can see it over here. So we'll just click on it and they'll start working on it. And they'll get some resources for us and they'll open up that area. But the important thing about workers is this. Let me just kind of zoom in and look at the house. I need something to blunt my rage on. So what's going on is... And this is very important about the game. The workers are more sophisticated, but they cannot and will not do labor that is not of their station so farmers can only do farmer jobs and workers can only do um, worker jobs and so on so people of different strata cannot work down below they um or e above their station so um additionally if i look at the worker in this panel you'll see how like for example the farmer is happy with just fish um, a market and clothing and then what makes them happy is schnapps and a pub and then they're pretty much okay now however the as you get more advanced workers and citizens they their demands increase so they're like okay we want all the stuff that a farmer makes plus we want sausages bread soap schools and not just schnapps and pubs but we also want beer and a church so it takes more and more to make them happy. And let's think about that right now. So we can upgrade by just clicking on, you know, a farmer and saying upgrade. But you can also use the upgrade feature right here by turning your cursor into an up. If you click this, you'll notice how any place that I can upgrade, it's eligible, will have this big green arrow in it. And then you can just kind of click on it to upgrade it. Passionate young reporters enlisted. Our publishing house is already well underway. So this guy's publishing house is underway, um, which is unfortunate. So the newspaper can make your people happy, but more often than not, in my experience, it gives bad press, which makes people unhappy because. You know, you're struggling to survive right here, so everything is not going to be great because it takes a while to get on your feet. But that's just the way the ball bounces. So it, from this screen, you can hold shift and select a big area. And then, here we go. Um, you can't 
select into red. You have to select into green. So select a, an available upgrade unit. And then drag and then upgrade. And you can upgrade more than one. Now, notice how, though, once I've upgraded, I now have don't have enough farmers. So you have to really be careful at this point in the game of not getting too upgrade happy. Because it is not the case um, Oops, that you don't need the lower tier and you want to immediately upgrade. You need this tier. Now they need a road, so I'm going to build a road back here to get to them so they can get to the market. And it is worthwhile to click on the market and just make sure that everybody can get to it, but it does have a pretty big radius. You can see all of these streets are green, which means everybody can get to the market so uh, we can continue building. And we're going to go ahead and click on this. And I will build here and here. And I'm going to just kind of... There we go. Build a road back here. All right, this looks great. Now, um, we'll wait, but you'll see how this... Um, there's too many transporters. So what this means is, eventually, this warehouse can only serve a certain number of wagons at a time. So we only have one warehouse, and it's taking them forever. So we're going to need to build another warehouse to alleviate some of the strain here. I'm going to build it over here by these industries. So I'm going to use my pipette tool, just copy this, and we'll build another one. And we can build it right here. Now, it is very possible that doing this, and I'm going to kind of build the road like this and all the way around, um, is not great because now, you know, they'll take it to the warehouse instead of directly where I want. But for every warehouse you build, you get more storage. So um, we get more... Oh, no. Actually, I misspoke. You do not. It's not for warehouses. It's for um, trading posts, I believe. So this doesn't increase our max storage, but what it does for us is it allows um, some of the goods to be stored here so that we relieve the burden on this so there isn't a backup because everybody was having to go there. So now we are finally back into the positive on farmers, but again, I'm moving very slowly. Uh, we want to look at our numbers to see if everything is going well. And indeed, pretty much most things are, although we could use more potatoes and more um, wool at some point so i'm going to keep building small residents and you can upgrade these later these farmer residents i'm going to build one here and you want to not build them in the range of your lumber mill because they need the trees so i'm going to keep those there but you want to make sure that they are in range of the marketplace so click on this and for the most part, uh, let's see, how far can this get? So the fire station is having a little bit of trouble getting over here, but it still can. So you want to make sure that it's in the range of your services. Remember, though, it does not matter if your workers are close enough to their work. It doesn't matter that the, like a farmer over here is like, hey, my job's way over here. That's a problem, and it takes me a while to get there. They don't really care about that. So don't you don't have to stress about that. You got to stress about other things, but not about that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and copy. And I'm going to select this. And I'm not worried about continuing the road right through there at the moment. I'll build a road like this. And the road back around this other side. And I'm honestly, I have a, a good amount of wood. I'm waiting. I'll push it up. I'll just go back to normal speed. And I'm going to right-click menu, select copy, and you can just drag this out. And there. And that's going to use a lot of lumber, um, but not a ton. And there we go. All right. So now I have this massive section that's going to be uh, filled up. And we'll just wait. We need, I like to have these numbers high both of them um not super high but at least 50 because you want to make sure that you have enough people sometimes what will happen is like your industry will get blocked 
for a particular thing because you have too much of it, and then those workers will just be idle. And you will misconstrue, and then you will kind of promote people out of that category. And then all of a sudden, that resource, there's a demand for it, people have to go back to work, and then your numbers don't line up. So you've got to be really careful um, with making sure you have a surplus here before you go crazy promoting. All of these people pay money. And here is one of the secrets to the game as well. So it's like their needs, okay, um, will allow you to promote, but their happiness is what tells you how much income they give you. So how happy they are reflects how much money you make. Whereas the needs are like how many people live there. So you want this number to be high because of that they have all their needs met and these are required for them to be promoted. You can't promote them unless they have all of these met. Um, but this one, happiness, reflects how much money you make. So you really want them to be happy so that you make money. And in fact, look at this. We're at plus 140 on our balance. Now, I'm moving super slowly. I am just being very, very patient. It's so easy in this game, especially what throws me is you start with a lot of money. And then like building a house, for example, if I click farmer residence, it doesn't actually cost any money. It just costs some wood. So you think, oh, I can just drop these down, you know, indiscriminately. But it puts a strain on your um, system. So we have fish, we have, you know, shirts, we need some more schnapps. So we could start putting those in. But also, you want to be sure, there we go. And, oh, what's this star? Resident be quest. Better what's already gold. So these people, um, oh, they just want to give us 20 potatoes, which is great. So just take them, and we just get 20 potatoes for free. Um, and then it says collect the gift, so you just have to pick it up with your hand. And then that somehow makes them happy. They're like, sweet. So sometimes your people will have quests. You usually want to do them. They give you good rewards. And it's just like a random if those happen, so it's kind of cool. It's a vibrant part. So after some time, I actually have 145. We're making money. So I'm going to go back to promoting people. So you can push U on the keyboard to open the upgrade thing. And again, it... Oops, pushed the wrong button. It does not matter where you upgrade the, the people. It doesn't matter, like, you know how in SimCity sometimes you want adjacent style buildings to be next to each other and then they can merge and, like you know, do all this cool stuff or, or whatever. Sometimes graphically they will merge. You notice how, like, these are all farmer dwellings, but there's, many of them are different. It's really cool. It's, it's, but, like, if I upgrade these two, you see they're different, rotated differently. Um, and I'm just going to upgrade these two as well. Here we go. And eventually these numbers will start to shift. We will lose farmers and gain workers. Now, I'm looking, uh, again, I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, clay pits need to be built on top of existing clay deposits. Look for one on the island. So, what she's basically telling us is these are jobs that workers can do. So, we can go and um, click on this and click clay pit, which leads to bricks right here. And they want us to build it where there is clay, which is way up here. So we'll build it right there where she says. And it costs 500 to build. And now there's a clay pit, but nobody can get to this. And there's also some bricks that we got for free. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take a road. Oh, looks like a quest. Um, and these need to be built in a factory. And we'll build it like right next to it. That's fine. Okay. But first, let me uh, let me slow it down so I can get this quest. There's a star here. What do these people want? Will you work your magic for us? Hey. We do so love to see. So, um, I say yes. What do you want me to do? From us to make the foreman work. So they're giving us this for free, which is a drill, and we'll talk about this. Is all we ever wanted. And all they ever wanted. That's great. So we'll talk about this in a moment. Um, now she wants to tell us about. Mind your building's processing times. Processing times are displayed as a tooltip. Um, okay, okay, okay. Uh, oops. 
All right, inefficiencies. Um, they are displayed as a tooltip when selecting a production building. One clay pit can supply two factories at once. Um, open up a second factory to optimize production. So what she's telling you is about what I was saying before, but it didn't necessarily matter as much. Here, let's build a second one, like she says. Now, um, I'm going to say, look at this, no warehouses in range. So, um, I keep pushing pause to, uh, or a space bar to pause the game. That is not what does it. I'm going to push P to pause the game just so I can talk to you about this. So, what they're saying is there's no warehouse in range. So, we'll get them a warehouse, and we're going to connect this to roads. Because if there is no warehouse um, connected to the supply depot at the harbor, then those supplies won't be shared. So, I'm going to build a road like this, and like this, and then I'm going to build a warehouse. And I'm going to make sure that the warehouse I build... Um, okay, okay, okay. She's telling me you can equip items in the trade union that will affect production building in its range in very interesting ways. Build a trade union close to your clay pit and try out the gift. So she wants us to build this building right here, which is a, um, a trade union. And you see the blue circle around it. This is what I'm talking about sometimes with the tutorial. There's like so much stuff that they're dumping on you. Um, that you don't even really have time to adequately read and understand it, which is what I'm trying to do with the guide, is really break it down and explain what is going on. So this, you want your clay pit within the area of influence of this trade union, so I'll drop it right there. And then I'm going to push this here. Okay, great. And then they're going to build a trade union eventually. And we're in blueprint mode, but we couldn't... Um, oh, okay. So I tried to build it. That's actually a good thing to mention as well. You notice how it's not built. And the reason it's not built um, is because I didn't have the amount of wood that I needed. So I'm going to wrap the road around it just because I like how this looks, not because it's necessary. And we need to build a warehouse over here for sure. Uh, now this is telling us, what does this mean? Insufficient workforce. So we need to get people over here. So I'm going to um, get the road going over here. I'm just going to build it right across. And we didn't have enough wood to even build the bridge, um, which is sad. So I'm going to build the road there preemptively. And what's going on is we need more lumber. So the sawmill is working and the lumberjack hut is working. But the issue is... Uh, okay, wait. Um, here we go. Production. So processing time. 15 seconds processing time 15 seconds so this the when the processing time and the production time are one to one the same then one to one is the right ratio look at this processing time mouse over it 30 seconds for um potatoes and then at the schnapps it is 30 seconds and then at the sheep farm 30 seconds and then here it is 30 seconds so like i said when i was building these it didn't matter because these are all one-to-one. -one. But now you're getting into different processing times. Uh, and we need to pay attention to that. Now, we're also getting into a position where we don't have enough wood. So this is when things can go haywire. Uh, I need to promote we don't have enough workers. So the insufficient workforce, it's really confusing. Um, I'm going to pause it just to talk about it. The insufficient workforce, even though the road doesn't go there, these workers can get there. So the workers can get there. But the goods can't be connected to the network yet. Which is an interesting distinction in this game. So insufficient workforce doesn't mean that our laborers that we have can't actually get there. It's that we don't have enough, as you can see right here, workers. We're minus 10. So all I need to do is just push U and um, upgrade a building. Oh god. So the newspaper's coming. Um, I'm going to upgrade this and this. Okay, great. And promotion's not possible because we no longer have enough lumber. So what do we need to do? We have a ton of workers, farmers, that aren't doing anything. We need more lumber. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click, and I'm going to pipette this, and I'm going to put right over here. Um, this will be at 100% if I build it right there. And then I will... Um, right click and I will copy this and build it right next door and then we're going to connect it all by with a road 
and this says they're planting the forest so it will take them a second to do that all right so perfect so we're still profitable but again you got to go slow in this game because if you mess up the balance it's really hard to work backwards and to balance things out and it's i've honestly had to start the campaign before in especially in anno 2070 when i was first learning to play anno games and totally restart them because i set myself in a position that i couldn't recover from or it was going to take forever so go slow and steady even though they're going to like dump all of these things on you be like hey do this hey do that just pump the brakes and be patient we've got a surplus of workers we're getting some labor but we need more and there's no rush on any of these quests like you're fine don't worry about rushing we'll get there when we get there everyone we have a lot of work still to do i want to talk about the trade union we need to get more lumber we need to get um you know uh, perhaps more fish more storage situated etc and we will get into that next time everyone this is a good place to end this episode we've got workers we're expanding our empire and with new types of workers come new buildings that you can make and the game gets more and more fun as the complexity unravels and your city really grows Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care.